On today's Taste Texas, Chef Garth is making a delicious spiced salmon with some beautiful roasted veggies and cauliflower mash. I've never had that. It kind of sounds like baby food. And if salmon is not your thing, Garth has a super simple five minute meal for you. Plus, we're making a visit to Eagle Mountain Farmhouse Cheese. So pull up a chair and join us at the table. And I'm Garth Blackburn. And we're so excited that y'all are here today. Thank you for joining us in studio in this beautiful showroom. And Garth is going to deliver again. He's going to make something delicious. And I can't wait to hear what it is because lunchtime is long gone. Long gone. We're going to put you to work on this one. So you're oh, definitely going to be contributing. We're doing a sizzled salmon. We haven't done salmon before. I'm pretty excited to cook with it. A lot of folks don't know how, how to really prepare it properly, so we'll go over that. Yeah. Some roasted vegetables, which will be great for this time of year. Mm -hmm. And then a simple way to do a cauliflower puree that's really going to feature some fantastic cheese. Cauliflower so, puree. 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 I've never had that. It kind of sounds like baby food. <laughs> With an intro like that, how can y'all not be excited, now right? Now you're interested, right? All right, let's right? get to cooking. Cauliflower puree, Set the not bar like low. baby food. <laughs> Set the bar low, and then you guys will be happy, right? Hey, way to deliver. All right, let's okay, do it. Okay, when, when I talk about roasting vegetables or meats, what, what do I always cook on in the oven? I mean, when I, I've got the <laughs> sheet tray, tray, and what do I put on that? Parchment paper. Right, and so uh, I think a lot of times, I keep talking about this, but you guys haven't really seen it. So I, I want to bring the camera in and Amy in. Okay. To, to lay this all out, so what I do at home is I've got the foil inside of a drawer, so it's as simple as just pulling a little bit of foil out. Okay. And then you'll press that into the sheet tray. All right. Okay, meanwhile, the parchment paper that I bought at the restaurant supply store, I actually have underneath my utensil divider, and I just leave a couple inches at the front. So then you're able to pull out one sheet at a time, and you're not wasting any cabinet space. So when I keep talking about parchment and foil, Really, if you guys will make it this simple and set it up for that at home, you'll find that you're never going to wash another sheet tray again because it's all ready to roll. And I'm just thinking, mine's in the pantry, and I always have to go to the pantry, get the thing, come back, tear it off. And anyway, it's a long story, but you know, I like I your do. tip. That'll Help be a lot keeping easier. Keeping us organized, right? It is. It okay, is. Perfect. Okay, we're going to have you cut, cut the sweet potato. Uh, what my favorite thing to do is for any vegetable that's somewhat round is to make part of it flat so it doesn't roll. So I'm just going to cut off the bottom, and now you're going to be set to go ahead and cut that up into some pretty good sized chunks, about three quarters of an inch to an inch. Do I slice it first and then? And then you can cut it across. Chunk it? Okay. Keeping your fingertips back, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I learned this from you not too long ago. Am I? <laughs> Did you just talk? I'm sorry. You don't need to talk with the knife, Amy. Well, anyway. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> So that's looking pretty good. I wasn't yep. quite paying attention to that. <laughs> like that I'm sorry. So I'm not trying to be rude, but I, I did this actually like the other night. I just remembered I was cutting tomatoes and I turned it. I don't know why I just wasn't thinking and I was trying to cut from the round side and I was like, wait a minute, why would I do that? Put it on the flat side. Duh. I think I learned that from you. I'll give you credit. Well, thank you. Okay, what? What's the matter? Why not? Well, it wasn't as much rude as I was scared. So okay, there you go. we're just going to lay these, these sweet potatoes Done. down. You'll grab those Brussels sprouts. Yes. All right. You've already cut these. We cut those in half. We also cut off any of the really hearty stem that's at the base. So all go right. ahead and toss those on Just want it all together. Uh-huh. Do you want to mix together? Sure. Let's mix oh. it all up. This is like a vegetable medley. It is. Uh, we'll add some onion for aromatics. So that's already diced up. I see. You didn't want me to do that, right? Um, <laughs> baby steps. <laughs> see? All right, so now you're going to put on, first, we do all of our dry spices so they'll get to stick onto the vegetables. So that's going to be salt, kosher salt. A little bit. I don't like a lot. Freshly cracked pepper. I know you don't. Um. <laughs> Actually, that seemed like a lot, didn't it? We need to balance that out with pepper. There and we'll go. balance it out with a little bit more, too. So this is Italian seasoning, oh. which I think goes really well for more of the earthiness when you're going for roasted vegetables rather than fresh herbs. Especially on um, this. And this is smoked paprika, so it adds a little bit more depth 
mm -hmm. to the flavor. You won't really taste it as paprika. It's just going right. to taste a little bit smoky. And so now you'll put the olive oil down. If you remember, we put the olive oil on after. We're going to use the Texas olive oil. You want this one that I doused the uh, kale with hey, last. But she I'm did oven use my fried kale and about an inch of oil on the sheet yeah. tray last time. Wow, See? I'm impressed. Hi. Hi. I'm getting <laughs> professional. There you go. How do you like that? Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this in the oven. The total cooking time is going to be about 40 minutes. But one of my favorite foods to combine with vegetables or anything else is, of course, bacon. So halfway through, yeah. with about 20 minutes to go, we're going to add a sheet tray of bacon in. It'll all be finished at the same time. Then we're just going to mix it all together. So this is going to go in at 400 degrees. Okay. On convection, and that's something we'll talk about on a future show, about how much easier your cooking will be at home if you guys will use convection. Perfect. All right, I'm excited. This is going to be a great meal. We're going to cut to a quick break, and we'll be right back. in the oven, this beautiful salmon that Gar's going to show us how to prepare. But first we want to show you a place that we recently got to visit, really fun ch uh, cheese place called Eagle Mountain Farmhouse Cheese. Cheesemaker Dave rocks. Cheesemaker Great Dave. Guy. He's awesome. Y'all take a look. We're at Eagle Mountain Farmhouse Cheese. Here to learn about how cheese is made and meet. Meet Cheesemaker Dave. <laughs> Cheesemaker Dave. Let's go talk to Dave. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this. Well, I, with tongue and firmly implanted in cheek, I tell people I'm a recovering lawyer. <laughs> and I, the last time I went to Europe was in 2008, and I stayed in southern France for some time. Uh -huh. And um, I just, you know, every time I go to Europe, I have all these great cheeses and charcuterie. They go by for the day. You know, you go down to the little squares, and they're going to get their bread over here. And they're met in Germany, for instance, the Metzgerei for their meat and the cheese shop. They and their wine, and they take their time. They take off two hours to three hours for lunch. And that's when I ran across an article about a guy out west of me, Stuart Veldhuizen of. Veldhuizen cheese. He makes great cheddars. Redneck cheddar. That's what Redneck cheddar, and he's you know he's become a very good friend. That's we're a very small community. The cheesemakers, 20 to 25 in the entire state. There are 94,000 currently 94,000 licensed attorneys in Texas. I look at that, and then I go 20 cheesemakers, 94,000 lawyers. I like the odds of the 20 cheese maker, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So do you take two to three hour lunches now? I, no, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, so tell me about the varieties, because you're pretty specialized, right? As a raw milk cheese maker, I've, uh, I've got to make a cheese that, that will age past 60 days and beyond and still be good. I started out making Gouda styles. I'm making a, now I'm making a raclette, a cheese we call Birdville Reserve, which is a Trappist style natural rind. But that cheese, I, I joined the American Cheese Society uh, after we got into the business. And the first year I was eligible to enter cheese into the competition, we took a first place uh, in our category with ACS. This was really good. Thank you for showing us around and giving yeah. us an inside look on how you do this. And I can't wait to try the self-named St. Dave's. <laughs> Cheers to that. Awesome, thank you. We love him. His cheese is amazing. And of course I was like, okay, where can I find this? Where can I buy it? So I'm excited to, to get some. Pretty um, readily accessible. Central Market, a lot of those locations, whole farmers foods, markets. Some Whole Foods locations. Some Whole Foods, yes. Um, but really I'm, accessible compared to some of the dairies we go and visit, which are harder to come by. So this is something that you guys could absolutely get at home. And more importantly, what I loved was his passion for what he does. He and does. he started this such, you know, later in life, which is really cool and exciting for me as I'm getting older that you can still, you know, achieve your passions and your and your desires as you get older. So anyway, let's I put this cheese to work. I know not to say a word about yeah, that. Just so. be quiet. Make your mash. <laughs> <laughs> Make your mash. So what better way to feature Cheesemaker Dave's cheese than your baby food puree? I'm sure he's <laughs> loving that now. If you'll dump some of that cauliflower into this hot water. You said some, so that means not all. No, don't, don't make it go over the top. OK. I'm also going to add some sweet onions mm -hmm. and some whole peeled garlic cloves. 
Awesome. You dropped Minus one. Minus one, just two. That's really all I wanted. Do so you want me to pick that up and throw it in the pot? <laughs> no, thanks. It doesn't matter. It's going to be hot anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter about all that <laughs> dirt on the ground. Hey, a little grit will never hurt you. So we're going to boil this mm -hmm. until it's really tender. That's going to bring a lot of the flavor together. Then we're going to strain it out, puree it with some of Dave's cheese. And okay. there's really, it's a, it's a lot of neutral stuff. There's not a whole lot else going on to it. So the reason I'm such a big fan of featuring it this way is that cauliflower is fairly neutral. So you're really going to taste his award-winning cheese. That's the cheese that we're going to be using. He's going to make it taste not like baby food. The Burnville <laughs> Reserve. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be rolling Oh, that's with. the best. I love that one. That awesome. Is. Okay, I can't wait to taste it. Okay, we're going to get ready on the salmon as well. Mm -hmm. And for that, we're just going to mix in, if you'll put some brown sugar down on there. Down on the plate? Uh-huh. Okay. This is some espresso powder. Yeah. This is a little bit of unsweetened cocoa and some smoked paprika. Wow. If you'll mix that in for me, I'm going to add a little well, salt and pepper to it. an interesting combination. What made you think of that? Sweet, savory, salty, smoky. Kind of add it all together. It really brings it, brings it all into one. And what we're going to do is just dredge the top of the salmon, mm -hmm. drop down some oil, get a quick sear on it, and we're going to be doing that right after this break. Awesome. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to take another break. We'll be right back. Cauliflower. Onto the cauliflower. <laughs> First, we're actually going to sear the salmon. The cauliflower is almost tender. Okay. So we're going to sear the salmon real quick. Uh, what I'm going to do here is We've just. We've got this cool blend of stuff over like here. Like sugar and cocoa powder and espresso and smoked paprika. Mm -hmm. It also has salt in there. So I'm just going to do the top portion. Mm -hmm. I am going to put salt in the bottom as well. And if you'll do me a favor and put down some oil there on the griddle. Which is, is this the grapeseed? It is. Okay. Okay, and then we're just going to drop this on. And can you use your pan and if you don't have a griddle? If you don't have a wolf griddle yet, then yes, you can use a pan. I'm nice. a little biased though, but yes, yeah. you can use a pan for that cast iron skillet would work well. That's what I was going to ask. That spice mixture actually is going to make it much less likely to stick. Yeah. And the sugar that's in there will make it really golden. So you're going to see that it's going to sear a lot faster. It'll have a lot prettier finish than what it would if you didn't have anything on it at all. So right. this is kind of a great home cooked shortcut way to get that pretty restaurant sort of finish. Awesome. Okay, I so guess it's gonna go in the oven. Is that gonna <laughs> you, go in the oven? You guessed right. I knew it, I knew it. And in again, the reason is I don't want the outside to get overcooked in order right. to get the center cooked through because the oven's gonna cook it through more slowly. Okay. Okay, if you'll do me a favor yep. and pull the cauliflower yes. out of there, put it into our blender. The baby food that we're gonna spruce up. I'm you just giving you a hard time. For failure the reason I, I really like cauliflower, I'm just teasing you. But this is a great substitution for uh, mashed potatoes. So yeah, somebody's wanting to do a little bit lower carb, mm -hmm. and it has nutrients. And once we add enough cheese to it and butter to it, it's not going to be. <laughs> it's not going to be. Then you won't be missing a thing. Nope. So this butter is from Lucky Layla Farms in Plano. Uh huh. And then we've got some of the the cheese. Again, that's that Birdville Reserve. That was my favorite. Cheese. He served like three different, four different kinds, but that Birdville. If y'all can find that at the grocery store, you will not be disappointed. It is awesome. Really creamy. It's it was delicious. it was mild, but it was it didn't had have enough. That funky cheese. Thing it going. needed. It, it was calling for wine. We decided it was calling it was. for wine, and it was calling for a loaf of hot French bread. Anyway, we'll get to that later. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Get this one, the Bird Bill. It's my favorite. Okay. A little salt and pepper in there. We had the butter. We had his cheese, and we're going to puree this. Mm -hmm. Now, this is kind of a. This is kind of an important one when it comes to how you're using a blender. I'll just tell you a quick story. I had a bad experience one time that my wife was cooking dinner, and I, I, that wasn't the bad experience, but <laughs> uh-oh. And no, no, it got much better. This is before we had kids. I walk in the kitchen because I had heard her yell, and I was so excited. You know, she's cooking, and I realized that she's topless. And I was, I was even more jazzed up, and now all the women are like, this is going the wrong direction. But, what, yeah. what had happened was she looked at me then and she had this look like, I better stop smiling instantly. And at that point, I mean, I'd been married, so I was used to mixed signals from women. <laughs> but I couldn't understand why I was in trouble for being excited about it. Well, what had happened was she took tomatoes that were hot, yeah. put the lid on really tight, uh -huh. turned it on, and what happens when hot tomatoes out of the oven to make tomato basil soup, <laughs> they blow up. 
So it blew the top off the blender. She had to blow her top off. Our entire kitchen that used to be white was now covered in tomato puree. Oh no. So I mean it looked like a murder scene, but when I had walked in, I hadn't noticed any of that. All of I saw was yeah, right? You're a guy. If, if y'all don't have the fancy blender at home, what you want to do instead. Thank you, because I was gonna ask. Okay, is is just take some plastic wrap, mm -hmm. put that on top of your blender, mm -hmm. poke some holes in that. Okay. That's gonna let the steam out and you just want to cover that with one of your fancy towels. And uh -huh. now, steam's coming out, but it doesn't keep all that pressure in, ah, okay? So wow. pretty simple setup, and the plastic's just gonna keep any of the food from popping out of there. That's cool, I didn't so know that. That's our baby food puree that's gonna awesome. go on the base of our plate. Can't wait. What you're gonna do now is flip that salmon over. Okay, I need some tongs, thank you. And you're gonna brown it on the other side as well? Just a little bit, uh-huh. It's kinda getting caramelized. Uh, look at oh, that, and that looks wow. delicious. Can y'all see? Yes, please tell me yeah, you can. Yeah, you gotta get in there. Look at that. Yep, yep, yep. That's awesome. And that really, like, that's what you see from a restaurant even without the glaze. The glaze is just gonna make it a lot easier for you guys at home. That's perfect. At this point, I'm about 20 minutes out on those roasted sweet potatoes and Brussels okay. sprouts with the onions. So we're gonna put the bacon in. Uh -huh. That's gonna get nice and crispy. We're gonna bring all those flavors together. Awesome. Finish it up on the plate. I think it's gonna be an awesome combo. Okay, uh, we're gonna take one more break. And then I think we're gonna get to finally put all this together. Yes? We are. Oh, right. finally. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back in my Sub-Zero and Wolf Prep kitchen where all the action happens. Exciting meal today just because it's so simple. It's my Texas shrimp and pasta one pot stop. So let's go fire it up. Okay, when I put the water on, I added my diced sweet potatoes. As the water comes up to heat, the sweet potatoes are gonna be perfectly cooked through. That's gonna take about 12 to 15 minutes. Now that it's up to a boil, I'm gonna take some Texas Gulf shrimp. These are 16 to 20 count, which is 16 to 20 per pound. I'm gonna stir those in. I'm gonna let them cook for one minute before I add the rest of my ingredients. And before you know it, it's gonna be on the table. Okay, this is where we just add all the rest of the ingredients. So I'll take about a minute to cook and then we'll be ready to roll. So I'm gonna put some red pepper flake. I like to use fresh pasta. I buy my garlic already peeled and we just slice that up. These are going to be some sun-dried tomatoes. These are the dried ones, not packed in oil. These are some of our kitchen pride mushrooms. They're creminis or baby portobello. And finally, some Texas spinach. And what I love about this dish is I stir it in, give it one minute, strain it, put it on the platter, top it with some extra special yummy cheese and some pecans, and we're ready to eat. All right, here's the easiest part. We're just gonna take all those delicious ingredients, toss those into our bowl, top this with a little bit of Texas olive oil. This is a spicy version of rattlesnake olive oil. This is going to be a little bit of balsamic vinegar, some salt, some pepper. We're gonna mix that in. Cut all of our ingredients in there, and now we'll just top it with some Eagle Mountain Farmhouse Cheddar Cheese. This is David's award-winning cheese. Some Texas pecans from Sugarland, Texas, my hometown. And then we'll just garnish it with a little bit of basil and a sprig of rosemary. That basil's gonna kinda infuse the flavor into the pasta. It's super easy, super delicious. Roasted veggies, we got salmon, there's some bacon in there, and now it's time to put it all together. Oh, and the baby food. 
Can't forget that. <laughs> and the baby food. The squash puree. I mean, the, the cauliflower puree. See, I've already forgotten. <laughs> With green mountains cheese, right? That's it. That's what's cheese most maker important. Dave. Okay, so our timing now, everything's going to be ready yes. to pull out. Yes. If you'll start pulling those trays out of the oven, that's the vegetables, the okay. bacon, and then the salmon that we put in there to finish. So what I'm going to do out. is just chop up some herbs to make a quick sauce. Uh, because we're using quite a bit of vinegar for this, this for kind of South American food, it'd be called a chimichurri. But I'm using fresh basil, chives, and parsley. I'll just chop that up fairly fine. Put that in. I'm also going to mince a little bit of garlic. And y'all could use a food processor for this instead if you want. Put that in. This is gonna be some champagne or Chardonnay vinegar, some sort of white wine vinegar, a little bit of the Texas olive oil. You've got your trays ready. Yep. And, uh, and now we'll just lay this all out. Awesome. Okay, so there, here's your... Actually, it looks like mashed potatoes. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Why don't you grab some of those veggies? Okay. Does it matter how many? No, we're just, just going to put lots. a little... Oh, shoot. I'm spilling. Where do you want it? Right there. Okay. That's good. Just right across there. I'm like, it's about to fall. <laughs> Tell me. Hurry. I think you want to do this. I don't know how you want this arranged. This is your artwork. No, that's, that's looking perfect. I thought you were talking about your reach. Is that good? No. Yes, that's good. Okay. We'll take a little bit of bacon. Uh-huh. If I'm doing this at home, I'll usually reserve some of that grease, toss that in as well. Toss it in where? The grease in with these vegetables. Oh, wow. Bacon okay. Bacon grease, right? Because we only had a little awesome. bit of olive oil. So now pick up a piece of salmon. Oh, no. Well, get you <laughs> Shoot. A spatula. It broke. This isn't pretty. Help. Okay, here's what we're looking for in the salmon. Is yeah. you, you want it to just barely start to flake. Yeah. But the center to still be a, a slightly fleshy color. Okay. Okay. Pull that off. Yeah, the that tongs the were top. not the thing to, yeah. You gotta use your spatula for that. Just and gonna then. Mix up those herbs. That's really cool. I didn't see what you did there, but I'm gonna have to have you write Basil, it down for me. Parsley, garlic, vinegar, and olive oil. Oh, nice. Oil. Awesome. Are you gonna make two plates? Because that's mine. <laughs> oh, is that yours? <laughs> Can I have a bite of your, your uh, little sample plate yes, here? Yes, we, we all share, since you did do all the work. I, I love that she's going straight to the giant piece of bacon. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Forget the fish, yes, the I vegetables, and the baby food. Can't wait to taste food. your baby food. With bacon, it's definitely going to be better. Wow. What's that? Yes. Awesome baby food. 14 years <laughs> later, loving the you baby food. You should bottle that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, it's so delicious, I promise. To get today's recipe, go to our website, and that's tastetexastv.com. Also find us on media. social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Oh, and Facebook. So thank you all for joining us today. We'll see you next week. That baby is pretty good. Awesome.